vehicles which were self-propelled and based on the unique energy sources that we had researched. Each of the vehicles must be able to compete in a relay race as shown in the figure on your right. In addition to the objectives, ISME has also provided the students as well as uh, the groups uh, the competition constraints for the time. Uh, to begin, each of the vehicles must fit in a 200 by 100 by 100 millimeter box as shown here. In addition, uh, each of the vehicles must travel a distance of 3 meters, totaling 12 meters overall. The team is allotted 180 seconds to set the cars up on the racetrack, as shown previously. In addition, the travel time uh, for each of the <coughs> relays is 120 seconds maximum. Uh, the first vehicle must be initiated through the use of an on-off toggle switch, and each of the subsequent vehicles must be engaged autonomously. They must be, have the ability to travel on various flooring, as the flooring is unknown to us currently. When we get to the competition location, we will be awarded the types of flooring and have to make any changes if necessary. It should also be noted that judging will be based on the unique energy sources, as well as the creativity and the time it takes to complete these relay races. A total score will be based on two different tracks. <coughs> I will now be passing it off to Patrick, who will be discussing our preliminary research. Thank you, Kelly. For our preliminary research, we researched several alternative energy sources and narrowed it down to our five most promising. These are electric, chemical reaction, compressed gas, magnet, and torsion spray. The electric, we used a battery to power a DC motor. The chemical reaction, we utilized the reaction between diacoke and mentos. For the compressed gas, we controlled the release of a high pressure gas. The magnet, we used the repulsion and attractive forces of magnets, and the torsion spray utilized the potential energy stored within the spray. In the preliminary, the preliminary testing, we determined that the electric motor was our most reliable source. From this, we, we utilized this in two manners. One, as a bevel gear to an axle, and also as a propeller to displace air. The chemical reaction, we determined that the scale of the reaction was not large enough and did not produce enough force to move the vehicle that required three meters. Also, the length of the reaction was not long enough. With compressed gas, we needed to puncture a CO2 canister and trigger a release valve to control the release of the CO2. For the magnet, we used a V-gate motor, which will be discussed in a later slide. The torsion spring, our initial, we initially used a 0.2 foot-pound spring, but after testing, we decided that this was not sufficient. After testing several other sp springs, we used a 2.5 foot-pound spring. The design of this car is similar to that of a mousetrap. Our vehicles are initiated in three different ways. Our first is initiated via an on-off toggle switch the second, a bumper system, and the third and fourth using Hall effect sensors, which will initiate a microprocessor. <coughs> the Hall effect sensor is a transducer that uses a, that varies its output voltage um, due to a magnetic field. And now I'll pass on to Dan. Thank you, Pat. Uh, as Pat said, we tried to utilize magnets for a vehicle. Um, just right off the bat, we did not use this car, but it was a good learning experience. The way the V-gate motor um, works is it's a cylindrical wheel that has uh, magnets placed around the outer surface of the wheel in a V uh, formation. Uh, there is an external bar magnet that controls the wheel by repulsive or attractive forces. Um, the point where the V converges is where there's the gate or the sticky spot. This is where the bar magnet needs to be removed to jump over that sticky spot and to not disturb the flow of the wheel. Uh, so from there, we, as you can see, we did have a pre preliminary design for the chassis. However, uh, due to some complications and without our system, assisting the vehicle to travel three meters, we um, went with a backup plan. The backup plan was a propeller. It is a nine volt battery to a DC motor. It, uh, on the motor is a two-blade propeller. Um, the propeller displaces the air, um, pushing the vehicle forward. This is the first vehicle, so it has an on-off switch uh, connected to a circuit board. On the circuit board is a chip that is programmed to uh, have the motor on for a certain amount of time, so it's capable of traveling three meters, along with having enough power to trigger the next vehicle. The next vehicle is our spring car. As you can see, in the rear is a bumper which is triggered from the previous car. The bumper is connected to a, uh, a latch, which is then released, and the arm will then start to uh, decompress the spring. 
the uh, arm, is, we made it as long as possible within the dimension so that we could get the most torque over the, uh, the longest time, over the distance of the travel. Um, this is connected by a string to the rear axle, which is wrapped around. And um, on the front of this vehicle is then a bar magnet, which will then trigger the next vehicle. And I'm going to pass it on to Ron to continue the relay. Thanks, Dan. Now, as Dan mentioned, our third vehicles are the electric car. And as he previously said, a bar magnet is placed on the, subsequent, uh, on the preceding vehicle to trigger the Hall effect sensor on the electric car. Upon initiation, uh, the voltage is sent to the DC electric motor from a 9-volt battery, turning uh, an output drive. The output shaft of the motor rotates perpendicular to the rear axle and parallel to the, drive, to the central drive shaft. A set of bevel gears is used to transfer the rotational energy of the drive shaft to the rear wheels propelling the vehicle forward. A microprocessor is used, again, as a timing device to allow the vehicle to travel its three meters and then shut off accordingly after initiating the subsequent vehicle or without interfering with this vehicle. Um, again, a bar magnet is placed on the front of the vehicle, which enables the initiation of the Hall effect sensor on the fourth and final vehicle, our compressed gas. The compressed gas vehicle utilizes a 16 gram uh, CO2 canister, and the high pressure difference between the canister and the environment allows for the propulsion of the vehicle. Upon initiation of the Hall effect sensor, a servo rotates, pulling a trigger, allowing the release of compressed air or compressed CO2 through a small tube, um, and then a paddle wheel is fixed to the rear axle, and the paddle wheel is designed to capture this uh, dispersed air, propelling the vehicle forward. Um, the microprocessor in this case, since this is the last vehicle, is designed to allow the complete compression of the trigger, allowing for the full dispersion of the CO2 from the car, completing the mock relay as designed. I'm now going to pass it off to Jessica to speak about our project now. Thank you, Ron. Um, as you can see above on the screens, this is our schedule over the last two semesters. Um, what I wanted to point out is that originally we had planned to have our research completed before winter break, but because we wanted to spend more time focusing on making sure that our Magna car works the best, we extended it out to mid-January, which by doing that, it delayed our remaining activities by a week or so. So currently we are on schedule to have everything completed before our competition next week. Next we have our budget. We were allocated with $1,784, which came from the School of Engineering, the Mechanical Engineering Department, as well as the ASME Philadelphia chapter. Of that, most of our money went towards the competition registration as well as travel, but we have spent approximately $630 on materials that range anywhere between our bevel gears um, in our cars all the way to our torsion springs. And finally, the $100 that was mandatory for our lovely poster on the second floor that everyone should go check out. So currently, we have approximately $280 remaining that we will spend on any minor adjustments that need to be made for our cars before the competition next week. So what we have learned over the sake of the last two semesters is that it's better to start your preliminary testing early. The earlier you get your testing done, the more time that you can spend on working on the final design. Now, in terms of our team ourselves were all a bunch of mechanical engineers. But what we had to deal with were circuits and coding that had to work for the microprocessors. So the assistance of an electrical engineering student would have been um, accepted. Um, next thing is to always have a backup plan. As we had stated before in the presentation, we had initially started with six different ideas. In the long run, we ended up with four cars, which worked to our favor because we only needed four working cars for the competition. And finally, we utilize our resources to the best of our abilities. Every time we had a question, we were not afraid to ask the varying faculty members from the different disciplines for assistance as well as speaking to our advisor or extending ourselves out to speaking to our family members that are actually in the industry themselves. So what have we accomplished? What we have accomplished is an understanding and alternative energy sources that will help in the long run um, decrease the use of fossil fuels, which are harmful to the environment, um, and they're non-renewable. In doing so, we have created four um, miniature cars, which are currently to my right, running on various energy sources, and they can complete the mandatory, the required 12-meter mock relay provided by the ASME competition. 
Um, and finally, mentioning the ASME competition, we plan on winning the competition next weekend at Yale University. So now I will pass it over to Ron with our closing remarks. Thanks, Jess. Lastly, I'd like to give a special thanks to all the following individuals who helped <coughs> contribute and assist us throughout the length of the project. Again, we are Team ASME Energy Relay, and I'd now like to open the floor to any questions. actually had this competition before, but it does easily compete it, uh, complete the relay in well under 100. Any questions? Yeah. Do you have the week until the competition, what kind of refinements are you looking to do? So just um, mostly just changes with the programming, maybe extending how long a certain car will run, specifically uh, the propeller car. Um, probably we may make some changes to the propeller type to try and maybe introduce a three blade propeller to try and uh, make it a little bit faster, but we're looking at under 10 seconds for each car as it is. So just minor, very minor changes up until the competition. <coughs> Thank you. Which of the cars performs better? Which of the cars performs worse? I would say if we're talking strictly time, I would say the compressed gas car definitely is the fastest, but in that same sense, it is also the most uncontrollable. So if the car wasn't in the last position, it would probably interfere with the subsequent vehicles, but um, in that, 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 that's why it's the best car to be last. Uh, as far as worst, I would, I would, there is no really worst car, but the first car, the propeller car, is probably the slowest at this point. We have time for one or two more questions. Right. What type of terrain these vehicles are driving across? Uh, the terrain wasn't initially disclosed to us. Um, they strictly it was strictly just um, any type of flooring that could be found in a school. So it could be carpet, it could right. be shag rug. Well, I wouldn't yeah. say shag rug. Down shag rug. <laughs> <laughs> just a low profile rug, carpet floor tile. And we have time for one more, for example. How are you planning to increase the efficiency of the cars? What's the criteria? Say, I'm going to do this and go faster, or just try and try this and go? Um, well, there's certain limitations within each system. Um, for instance, the two and a half foot-pound spring was the maximum torque that we were that we could use uh, without breaking the string or without creating problem without creating an extensive torque within the chassis itself. Um, as far as electric motors go, both motors are maxed out at 9 volts and the compressed gas, you could easily, relatively easily, increase the CO2 size, the cartridge size to increase the speed and the length of the time, but for the constraints of the competition, I, I, I think that these vehicles work to their fullest extent. <coughs> Thank you very much.